we shall now take a closer look at a standard SSD and how they are connected to the computer, how they should be configured in the BIOS, or the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI, and how to check if Trim is working or not. The physical size of the SSD is normally 2.5 inch, so they should fit into most notebooks or laptops. However, you should check that the SSD is not too thick to fit into the hard drive compartment, as they do vary. If it is to be installed into a desktop case or 3.5 inch bay, then you will need to purchase a 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch adapter, or something similar to the one shown here. The SSD would be screwed into this, then the adapter screwed into the one of the 3.5 or five and a quarter inch bays. There are other form factors that we should be made aware of. For instance, the 1.8 inch SSD Vertex, which is available in 60, 120, and 240 gigabytes. In some cases, these will be fitted with micro SATA interfaces, or MSAT. So you should ensure that the system you are upgrading, whether a notebook, laptop, or desktop supports this connection, or have an adapter. Finally, we have the PCIe SSDs. This has the added advantage that PCIe has a greater bandwidth than SATA. If you're using the SATA SSD, then you will need just a standard SATA power and signal cable. There's been some confusion over which type of signal cable should be used, SATA 1, 2 or 3. All the electrical characteristics are more or less the same and the only big difference is that you will find that the SATA 3 signal cable has a clip on each end to prevent them slipping out of the connector. Most internal power supplies have at least one SATA power connector. If not, a suitable Molex to SATA adapter can be obtained. As we have discovered, NAND memory has a limited life and the controller tries and distributes even wear over the memory using wear levelling. You encounter and even where it will affect the overall capacity of the SSD. This is also why you never defrag an SSD. For trim to be successful, all the components must be trim compatible. Most SSDs are, but if in doubt, check with the manufacturer. The motherboard and the BIOS, or UEFI, must also be compatible. Once again, if in doubt, check with the manufacturer's manual or website. Finally, the operating system. Although you can install almost any operating system on an SSD, only Windows 7 and 8 support Trim, along with some versions of Linux. To install Windows 7 or 8, we shall run through the basics. First, the BIOS will need configuring. Because of the limited life of the SSD, you should install your working files and folders on a separate hard drive. The SSD will only contain the operating system. Here we have entered the BIOS and selected settings. Then system status. Note the drive layout. SATA port 1 contains a 64GB SSD and this is where we shall be installing our operating system. On SATA port 2 is a 500GB Toshiba hard drive that will be used to store data and install applications. Finally on SATA port 3 is a DVD-ROM drive. Although this would be acceptable, some minor adjustments can increase the performance of the SSD. Let's go back to the last menu and select Advanced. Now Integrated Peripherals. The item we are interested in here is the SATA configuration which is currently set as IDE mode. If we select this, we have the opportunity to change it. Our options are Disabled, IDE, AHCI and RAID mode. The correct setting should be AHCI or Advanced Host Controller Interface. A major advantage of the AHCI is the ability to remove the SSD while the system has power or hot swap. Another advantage is NCQ or Native Command Queuing, which is just one single component of the AHCI. This allows the drive to execute read-write commands that are transmitted randomly in order to optimise the movement of the read head. Let's look at the following example to clarify this. Here we have a hard drive that contains data. The coloured strips represent this. The green strip is one single piece of data that was split into two parts, since it was too large to fit on the hard drive as a whole. The white area represents the remaining hard drive space. 
This is the new data we wish to save. However, it is also too large to save as one single strip, so it is split. And to keep track of it, it will be marked as data 1. It is then saved to the hard drive. The remaining data is split again and marked as data 2, and is also saved. Once again, the remaining data is split and saved. And then the final part, data 4. Now to read the data, the read-write head seeks out data 1. In our example, the read-write head had to swing out to the most outer track. Then to read data 2, it had to move to the most inner track. Then back out to read data 3, and finally back in to read data 4. So from this, we can see a lot of activity of the read-write head switching between tracks as data is retrieved. Of course, the SSD does not contain a read-write head, but the principle remains the same as it too stores data randomly. Let's run through this again, but with NCQ enabled. It first reads data 1 as before, then the next track that contains data 3, continues inwards and finds the next part of the data, data 4. Finally, it reads data 2. Now it's only a question of rearranging the data to derive back at the original data. Thus the activity of the read-write head is reduced, increasing the speed. To explain this further, we could think of an elevator. The first person wants floor 6, so they push the number 6 button. A second person wants floor 1, so that button is pressed. And a third person wants floor 4, so number 4 is pressed. We could say that without NCQ, the elevator would visit floor 6 first, as this was the first button pressed. Then the first floor, as this was the next button pressed. Then finally, floor 4. But logically, it is much quicker if each floor is visited in order. Floor 1, floor 4, and floor 6. It is not essential to understand this completely, only that if ACHI is available, it should be enabled. But beware, IDE and ACHI are not fully compatible. So if you enable ACHI, then disable it, it is possible that the system will refuse to boot or read any data. Next is the boot option, so we'll return to the last menu. Then select boot option. Here we can see that the first boot is the hard drive. In our example, we need to make the first boot the CD DVD. Using the down directional key, the first boot option is selected. Then the CD DVD is selected. Finally, we press F10 and we are prompted to save and exit. We click on save and the computer will restart to reboot. The installation is the same as installing a fresh copy of the operating system. The only difference is that when you are prompted with where do you want to install Windows, you should check that the SSD has been selected before clicking on next. Once the operating system has been installed, we check the navigator. You shall find that the additional drive will not appear. This can be expected since this is a new drive. So we select control panel. Administrative tools. Computer management. Storage. Then disk management. We can see in our example that a message has appeared that the new drive must be initialized. So we click on OK. In our example, we have right clicked on the new drive and from the drop down menu selected New Simple Volume. Next, when the wizard starts, and we shall leave the size to maximum, click on Next. Allocate it with the drive letter of E, then perform an NTFS format to complete it. After the format, if we return to this PC, the new drive will appear. The final pieces of the puzzle is on how do we know that AHCI has taken effect? We can find out by accessing the device manager, then the IDE, ATA, ATAPI controllers category. In our example, the driver called standard SATA AHCI has been installed. Just remember that if you change the 
UEFI back to IDE, the AHCI will be disabled and there is a good possibility that the system will refuse to start. The very last part of the puzzle is trim working or not. To find this out, we need a special command. In our example, we have accessed the internet and started a search on how can I tell if trim is working. As with all our searches, we access the manufacturer's website, and since we are using Windows 8, we shall choose the very first listing. Notice that at the time of writing, there is not a trim command specifically for Windows 8. So we shall choose Windows 7, as the command is compatible. Here we are instructed to execute the command, and if the result is zero, then trim has been enabled. In our example, we shall highlight the command, then right click on it. From the drop down menu, we click on copy. Just before we leave this, it tells us that the command prompt should be run as administrator. If we right click on the start button, then click on command prompt admin. Click on yes to the user account control. Right click within the command prompt and from the drop down menu click on paste. So here is our command. We now press enter, we can see the result is zero, which implies that trim has been installed and working.